Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Let's get going with a Q&A. I've received your questions. Thanks for them. I'll do about the best I can in answering them. Let's start straight away from Sheer Cave. Hello, I've been playing with a Wilson Pro Stock K Blade. 1619 and 1819. Uh, 333 or 336 grams strong swing weight. Pretty hefty swing weight. 33.5 centimeter balance thinner beam than the h22 which is also the blade pro how would you recommend that i customize these rackets for better playability i would definitely add more weight in the handle it does sound like a pretty hefty frame overall if there's any lead tape added anywhere i probably remove a bit because i personally prefer a racket more in the 330 or a little bit below that range uh, depends on your game of course i think a more headlight balance overall will help you so uh, start by adding some weight in the handle you could add even up to 10 grams this is two points headlight balance which is a very low headlight balance for more maneuverability i recommend to go up at least to five six points headlight balance so some weight in the handle to start if you can find a way to reduce the swing weight i would do that it's tough with swing weight when you have to reduce it if there's no uh, weight added anywhere you might scrape some paint off underneath the grommet at 12 that's one way to do it you can also go for a thinner gauge string but assuming that you actually have a string setup you like that's gonna play a bit different than what you already have then. How are strings going to evolve in the future from Korban Alerich? We saw a lot of new products, soft co-polys, hybrid like Triax, new brand and models. With the new technology, soft poly and hybrid will kill multi. Yes, that's one way to look at it. It might actually kill off some multi-filaments. I mean, they will be around because they are quite a bit softer still than softer polyesters and behave differently. But I think most players these days want to use polyester for the obvious reason that they actually give you a bit more spin, a bit more control than the multis. And now you can hybrid two different polys. You can hybrid a multi or a poly and you can get really soft polys that are pretty arm friendly. Many players are also going down in tension to get more comfort. So I think we're going to see more evolution in polys than in multi filaments. Maybe something like Triax, which is like 50-50. Uh, but I'm definitely going more in the poly direction. I think we're going to see more poly and poly hybrids. We paired two different polys, something I'm trying with different strings at the moment. And I'm finding some benefits. Sometimes it's hard to say what's actually going on. But sometimes you actually feel in the difference and uh, see a change in this, how the string bed performs by putting a different string in the mains or in the crosses. So that's my prediction. We will see more and more polys, softer polys poly hybrids etc and i don't think there will be huge developments in the multi area that's my feeling rackets with great feel for drop shots touch volleys and slices and strings to match with them that's a bit of a tall ask to go for all that i mean control rackets with good feel i mean the prestigious the pro staffs the percepts maybe a little bit more mute to those but those are rackets like the blades these are all control rackets and then if you want really to put a premium on on touch and feel i'll go with like a hybrid setup with a natural gut maybe if you can afford it or a premium multi-filament maybe technifiber x1 biface there's some other good technifiber multi-filaments maybe a bablat xl or origin or something like that paired with a round poly i think you're gonna get really nice playability from that and good feel and touch if that's what you're looking for but there are many good control rackets still on the market but if you're open to looking for used rackets, uh, you can also find, obviously, so many great classic rackets uh, that are not that old. I mean, you can go back only like 5, 10 years and you'll find excellent control frames. Many of them reviewed on TennisNerd.net. Update on new Pure Strike from John. Can't say much about the Pure Strike yet. I played with it briefly, the 98-60-19. Plays a bit better, in my opinion. Uh, slightly softer feel uh, feels a bit more dampened but not that you don't feel the ball at all but definitely a little bit more more dampening going on similar to what happened to the pure arrow and that was a positive thing so i think the pure strikes will be an improvement at least for me personally uh, i still think 340 gram heavy headlight rackets give 4.5 that's ntrp scale one to seven strong all core players the best performance and reduce injury risk yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, it, we're all very different. I see sometimes that flexible rackets create more issues because the sweet spot is small and players need to um, make sure that they hit the sweet spot as much as possible to try to eliminate 
tennis elbow and so on like if you're hitting off center no matter what racket you're using that's when you're going to get more and more vibrations going through your arm so you will definitely want a racket that maximizes your chance of hitting the sweet spot you can argue that in some cases yes a heavier racket will work but it completely depends on your style of, of play and sometimes you're late due to the weight sometimes the weight helps you it, it really depends on the playing style i would say that very very stiff racket should be avoided if you want to save your arm but for some players with the right string that still works and uh, i don't think there's one like blanket statement you can give uh, that will explain why there's tennis elbow and not that spec is pretty heavy might work for a lot of players but might not work for other players as well i, I play with plenty of players in this category 4.5 5.0 and some of them use stiff pure drives and arrows and they play really well and have no arm issues and uh, some like more controlled rackets but i'm definitely not seeing many prestigious these days and i think for a reason they they want more more help uh, with their shots which which makes sense in a way floppa maxo do you think that the new stiga line will be available in the states or just select countries on the website i have no idea sorry so you can reach out to them and ask them if they're gonna plan some distribution i think it depends a little bit on how it works out with this line of rackets so we'll see for someone from someone who never went below 50 pounds with a poly and tried the white out extended version with possibly mid 40s due to loss of tension felt so good what should the reference starting point of low tension for me start 45 pounds i think that's a pretty good reference tension that's around 20 kilos uh, if you can play with that that's great like some people need to go a bit higher i struggle personally when it goes too low i tend to go 51 49 pounds that's where the lowest i personally can go to play with confidence if your timing is great you can you can time the ball if you have a very short swing uh, it can also work out so you need to experiment a bit but the low tension reference point start at 45 and go from there m keyboarder when stringing a hybrid do you use different tension on the mains versus the crosses or do you prefer to string them both at the same tension uh, depends what the hybrid you're talking about for example a poly poly hybrid depends on how soft one poly is and how stiff the other one is if it's, they're the same a multi-filament i tend to always string higher uh, so if i have a gut or multi-filament i tend to go 55 pounds and then for the poly i go like 53 pounds uh, so there's a difference i don't want to go too high on the poly side 53 is as high as it gets but then with paired with the multi-filament i will still get control with this 55 53 but i always tend to adjust a little bit if i go full bed poly uh, i tend to string the crosses maybe one two pounds lower uh, to have open up some more movement in the mains a lot of pros do this alcaraz for example goes four pounds lower so he has 55 pounds mains and 51 pounds crosses so you can experiment a bit um it definitely makes sense to string different strings at different tension if you're using two different whether they're polys or uh, a poly multi because um, two different strings will react differently behave differently so using different tensions makes sense but there's no clear guidance and rule beyond that i would say hasem as transition from blade 98 v8 18 20 to other racket what would be the best 100 square inch rackets for control and more forgiving i would say like you mentioned here the blade 100 at the pure drive will be a bit of a shock going from that kind of control racket ESO 100 as well you would try the blade 100 and the speed mp and the percept 100 i would say onyx percept 100 those are rackets that are within the control range but will give you a bit more forgiveness than the blade for sure the blade 1820 is not an easy racket to use uh, some players love it some players don't but to go all the way to a pure drive that's quite the, to the other extreme i would say what got you into tennis in the first place that's a good question i started playing tennis after watching a lot of tennis on TV when I was a kid, at Swedish tennis was at its prime then, and uh, Edberg, uh, Larsson, Gustafsson, Villander, all these players in that generation were doing great things on the tennis scene. You got into it, they were showing all the Grand Slams, all that, uh, all the interesting stuff where tennis Swedes were, were taking part, and I just fell in love with the sport. But then I also fell away, did other things. I've talked about this before in other videos. I started playing chess. I did that semi-professionally until I was 20. I played football. I played table tennis. I tried all other sports. But what stuck with me after uh, my 20s was tennis. I got back into tennis around 22, maybe something like that. 
and then it's been growing every year and uh, it's uh, my passion now it's just a, a sport that i think has the best blend for me of like geometry as my chess background like it's Tennis is also a geom geometrical square or geometrical sport in many ways. But there's also kind of elements of, of like, you know, beauty to the game with the kind of dancing movements. Uh, there's competitive elements. Hitting a ball makes you feel good. You're sweating. I love working out. So, yeah, it just fits all the bills for me. It's like really good, good sport in every single way. I do love other sports as well, but nothing really captures my attention as much as tennis have. Best power racket of Ultra, TFX1 blackout all 100 square inches and 300 grams that's a tough one uh, neither of them is my favorite i would go e zone 100 uh, that's been my favorite of the power rackets from the three mentioned i would go ultra i did like the ultra i think that was pretty solid played with it not so long ago i felt like the tfx one was a bit too wild uh, a little bit too much spin and power uh, while the blackout didn't wow me really in any aspect there's so many rackets within this category so the Ultra or the East Zone would be my choice here. Uh, Kyle, I've been customizing rackets for myself and for clients for a year or two now. Focus on strings, grips, weight, balance, and swing weight. Do you think twist weight is important enough to start measuring and adjusting as well? It can be, yes. I think that's uh, if you really want to give like a full-blown customization service, twist weight, like how much, how tough it is for the racket to twist makes sense so um, if you really want to make sure that you're putting all the key factors in the twist weight should be there uh, you can measure it if you have a swing weight machine uh, it's not something that people really ask for uh, if you're doing swing weight but it, it could be good to have an understanding of if players sit with a lot of um, spin usually don't want to have a too high twist weight but if they hit flatter through the ball you want to have a slightly higher twist weight because the stroke is more through while the spin shot is a bit more polarized where weight at the different poles of the racket so uh, that's what i've seen in my experience uh, i don't think there's any kind of firm science around this but but we're all trying to figure this out as we go along uh, what do you think about one of the best techniques to help you keep playing tennis injury-free for a long time? So I've written some answers on TennisNerd.net to these questions. Uh, this one has a lot of different pointers. So the key things to actually keep your body healthy, I would say, is don't overplay. I've been in a period where I played too much. Not so much for the body, but also for the mind that I kind of get bored of it. Like it's just too much racket testing, string testing. And overall tennis and, and you start getting not so sharp and playing competitive games and sets are starting to become a bit of like a chore instead of fun and i've been in a period like that and it's been a bit mentally draining uh, almost like a burnout feeling uh, so i would recommend you to not overplay don't play every day unless you're like a pro you know but uh, i can play as much as i my body can handle it pretty much because that's my job kind of and I need to do other things as a part of running Tennis Nerd and, and stuff like that. But uh, overall, I, I need to sometimes hold myself back because everybody wants to play tennis and it's always fun. And, uh, you know, you feel good afterwards most of the time. But sometimes reining that desire in a bit and playing like three, four times instead of five, six could really help you stay motivated and fit for longer. Uh, go to the gym is one of the things I do three, four times a week as well. That's really a requirement for me to stay pretty healthy, feel good about myself and uh, keep any kind of back injuries or stuff like that away, really try to strengthen my upper body. Obviously, if you go too far with that, you're going to be more sluggish and uh, have too much muscle maybe. Uh, so don't bulk up too much if you're going to be focused on the tennis. Uh, but going to the gym is absolutely vital, I think. Stretching, I try to do that from time to time. Not as a good of a stretcher as uh, most people maybe, but yeah, I really put it into my, my routine more and more over the years. And no yoga wizard here, but if you're into yoga, I think that's also fantastic and great for the body. So stretch, warm up, go to the gym, eat well. I try to eat pretty well, try to avoid too many carbs, and white bread, pasta, this stuff. And it's tougher to avoid beers, but I'm trying to, to keep myself in check. No Djokovic, but, but trying. And uh, obviously, like since I've been talking a lot about equipment through the years, use suitable equipment. Don't use a stiff string, uh, stiff racket combination if uh, you can avoid it. And and think about the gear you use, restring when you can, and so on. But warming up, stretching, and training in between tennis is vital, I would say. 
Bruno Alves, have you ever tried a string from Solinka called Barbed Wire? It's an old model from them I experimented recently and loved it. Yes, I have tried it, but it was a long time ago. It's actually a good string. Um, pretty spin-oriented, like most Solinko strings, and semi-stiff. Uh, Solinko strings tend to be very spinny, controlled, and quite firm. Uh, so it might be a string where you need to drop tension, but uh, a good one. Uh, as as I'm, I'm a fan of Solinko strings, I've been that since, you know, Hyper G, Turbite, Confidential. There's so many good strings they produce. And, uh, and barbed wire is also good. All right, Prince ATS Tour 100P or Angel React Pro 99, 80-90 for flat shots. <laughs> They're both pretty good. Uh, I would say I prefer the Angel a little bit more. But the Prince ATS Tour 98 is also a great frame. So those two sticks, I would choose probably over the 100p. Uh, but the React is very nice. I would say that would be my main recommendation. Really like the React. What's your favorite shot to hit and why from Tennis with Andy? Uh, anything with the forehand, generally. Like I've, the forehand and my volley, probably the two best shots. Uh, so a like a forehand down the line is probably my favorite shot where I can you know, make some damage happen. Even sometimes I get stronger players, so the forehand down the line would be my favorite shot. Uh, best stringing machines for beginners, drop weight and the cheaper constant pull with Wise Head. So Wise Tension Head is a, it's a brand. As far as I know, crank machines are inconsistent because it doesn't account for string stretch after it locks. Yeah, the best consistent stringing machines are electronic machines, but they are more expensive. You might need to go up to a thousand bucks, euros, dollars, whatever, or even a bit higher, 13, 14, 1500. And then it gets expensive. You can string well with a drop weight machine. I would say maybe crank is a little bit better. That's what I heard um, than drop weight. And usually they're a bit more expensive. The Prince Neos is a classic and many still use that. So that's a great machine. Uh, so hard to say. I mean, I would go for something used. You would look around for a used machine. It doesn't have to be the fantastic machine. You, I wouldn't worry too much about some tension drop here and there, uh, especially if you're starting out. If you're starting to accept customers and you're stringing for other people and you're accepting payments for that, then maybe you need to think about actually getting an electronic machine because then it's becoming a business and it might be really worth the investment. I bought a really old one for 500 euros, the first machine I had for a few years. It was a hassle to string on uh, an old Alpha from like the 80s or whatever. And now I have a, a, a brand new head machine that I love and it's great, like feels like a Rolls Royce, but I had to do the work those years where I where I did string for other people and I had to string and then did take a lot of time and effort to, to learn and, and to string on that machine. But you know, you have to kind of go through that. So I wouldn't worry too much, find a, a cheap used machine and, and get going and, and start practicing your technique. And then when once you're ready to start stringing, maybe more seriously, if that's what you want, then you get a better machine. With everything being equal, do you think the same string with thinner gauge will be more powerful? Uh, 16, 17 gauge. I was told thinner gauges would help more spin, but in my personal experience, I feel more power than spin and more ball pocketing feel, but could just be me. Thank you. Yeah, I would say like when I try thinner gauges, I do notice a bit better bite on the ball. I actually become quite a fan of some thinner gauge strings. I maybe talked about Selinga Confidential 120 before. It's a really good string for me really like that string bites the ball really well kind of see, seems to dip in over and over again so with thinner gauges i feel like you get a bit more power as well but definitely the there's bite on the ball which could be translated into some kind of spin potential uh, i think is true uh, obviously it's gonna drop tension quicker and it's gonna give you a little bit lower swing weight compared to a thicker gauge string uh, but i definitely give a shout out to some thinner gauges unless you are a uh, guy who hits hard with lots of spin and you break strings then you might need to go 130 or 125 okay best strings to go with the 2022 speed mp new speeds coming up uh, so you know uh, i currently use headhawk power and i like it a lot but i always wonder about other strings it's very subjective but i know you play with many yes i have played with many uh, i do like headhawk power probably the best so <laughs> it's a little bit of a shame i do like torline caviar it's one of my favorite strings that tend to go in many rackets uh, Vasabi is another tour line string I like, but there are many different strings I like. I like Luxon 4G, a little bit firm maybe for the Speed MP, but it depends on how high you string. Hawk Power favorite, Lynx Tour is what I've been using in my 2022 Speed MP. Also very good string, a little bit firmer, but down at 50 pounds I haven't noticed any issues uh, in terms of comfort for me personally at least. So Lynx Tour, Hawk Power, Caviar from Tour line. 
4G from Laxalon. There's so many good strings out there. You could probably put Razor Soft from Technifiber as well, another good string. So there's plenty of good strings in that frame. That's not the most string sensitive frame. Can you comment on Gromit support for rackets? Which brands are best at keeping Gromit in stock and which are worst? He has having some difficulty finding Prince Gromits for rackets that are currently on sale. Yeah, Gromits, they're a headache. Uh, that, that's the thing I would say. I mean, models keep coming out at a faster rate. Finding Gromits never easy. Sometimes they're run out of stock. So if you're stocking up on a racket, let's say you're buying three of one and you really like this frame, I would definitely buy a bunch of Gromits as well. Just to keep you going for a couple of years. And overall, I, I recommend not to switch too much because I do that all the time, and that's really something that kind of makes tennis less fun sometimes. It makes it more fun at some points, but when I'm in a testing period and I'm getting all confused, I, I feel like tennis is almost less fun and I get frustrated. So if you find a racket, you like it, and you have three or four or whatever you have of this racket model, make sure to get some grommets. Um, tennis Warehouse, other retailers should stock grommets, but they're not easy to find. I don't have any secret tips or a great advice around grommets, except that you should stock them up ASAP when you're playing with a model that, that has grommets for sale. With two-handers and power games dominating, why do you think extended length rackets are less popular than they used to be? Is there a chance they may take off again? I don't think they will ever take off, uh, to be honest. Like, they will be a, a kind of a fringe uh, product. They will be there. Um, some brands focus more on it. The Aero Plus, e Zone Plus, and uh, Solinco now with the extended Solinco rackets. They will be there with some brands. For example, you see Head, they don't really bother because I don't. they probably see that it won't sell unless you're a pro that definitely want it, and then they will provide that, that kind of extended version for them. Personally, I struggle to use extended frames. Uh, it feels great on serve usually, but then the other strokes, I struggle with timing and it feels a bit unnatural, especially since I test so many rackets. I feel like throwing an extended in is fine for a period, but otherwise it's just going to confuse me even more. Uh, so I don't think there's uh, loads of potential in extended frames, but who knows? Maybe there will be a future where, you know, everyone plays with a 275 or 28 inch racket, but I don't see it happening. We've had these kind of trends with some extended frames for a short period, and then it kind of goes back to standard length. Uh, so I think we will stay with that, to be fair. All right, Uga Buga, do you think you can still make a top pro 100, for example, being 25, 30 years old? Or do you have to be 1933? I would say it's very tough to be top 100 if you're 25 and you know, have not shown like super promise. Uh, I mean, if you're 25 and you're 200, uh, you can probably become 100 in the world if with some work and some luck and getting some, maybe a wild card or, or uh, just having a great like run, a great year. But overall, tennis is so tough to be a pro in. Like you really need to show super promise when you're a junior. Uh, otherwise, if you're a late bloomer in tennis, I think it's tough to expect any kind of uh, success on a financial level of tennis where you can actually make a living from the sport. It's, it's just too tough for that. So um, it's a little bit of a, you know, sad reality check, but it, that's tennis for you. You know, if you're not super promising as a junior and you're seeing some, you know, ranking points drop in, I, I, yeah, top 100 is just too far away in for most cases. What is the best recommendation to hit consistent forehands? My game is solid outside of that. Yeah, most players, they love their forehands. That's the stroke that they dominate with. Uh, where I play, like on 4 5, 5 0 tournaments, opens, whatnot, most players seem to struggle with their backhand. It's very rare that the backhand is better than their forehand. I think that's general, generally the that case in tennis. With the forehand, I think the take back is very important to have an early take back, also to make sure you add enough spin and, and you're not playing it too flat. You can also try to reduce your swing speed a bit and, and play with a little bit more time on the ball. I think a lot of rec players struggle with just their swing speed going from fast to very slow when they get tight and not having that consistent swing speed, which I think is very important. There's a YouTuber called Field Tennis. He has a nice video about swing speeds where you finding your kind of consistent groove speed when you play will help. And I think, you know, looking at your forehand, filming your forehand, making sure you add enough spin and maybe slowing it down a bit uh, to increase your consistency 
is something that's going to help you win more matches because consistent tennis is what wins on pretty much all levels. So those were the Q&A questions for this time around. If you like this format, let me know. Put your comments below. I will maybe do a weekly one if that's interesting. So I have some interesting podcast episodes coming up where we summarize the gear of the year and so on. Thanks for your support. If you need a tennis nerd consultation, I will put the link in the description below uh, or maybe check out my ebook about rackets and strings. That's it. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.